We'll let you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. I do, yeah. Okay, it. I have to wait for it. <laughs> yeah, um, I hope so. No. <laughs> but, but but I did tell her to put him on there. You did put a tell her? Well, yes. Okay, it's fine. Five thirty. We'll call the meeting to order the Moorhead City Council, Monday, April 8th, 2019. Madam Clerk, can we please get a roll call? Shelly Dahlquist? Here. Sarah Watson-Curry? Here. Shelly Carlson? Here. Heidi Duran? Joel Paulson? Deb White? Here. Steve Gertz? Here. Chuck Hendrickson? Here. Mayor Judd? Here. And then can we all please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> And I'll give the announcement uh, that if there are any people sitting um, in the uh, audience tonight that wishes to address the council during the meeting, there are yellow forms uh, that are found right outside of, in the hallway there. And if you would like to, to speak, please bring it to the clerk, uh, and then we will call you up when we get to your agenda item. <clears throat> when we get to the agenda item, citizens addressing the council, please note that this item is for citizens to address the council with items that are not on the agenda. And moving forward, are there any amendments to the agenda this evening? Mr. Mayor, there are no amendments. Thank you, Madam City Manager. And no motion is needed, so we'll move to the consent agenda item number four. On the agenda, I didn't receive any notice that anything was going to be taken off of the consent agenda. So is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. Motion has been, been made by Council Member, uh, Council Member Gertz. You had your hand. Oh, I have a question. Oh. <clears throat> I would like to abstain from item number 21 and um, item number 14. Let the record reflect that council member Gertz is abstaining <clears throat> from any motions regarding items number 14 and 21. Everyone good with that? So then we'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda by Council Member White with that clarification and seconded by Council Member Carlson. All in favor say motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> then move on to number five, recognitions <clears throat> and pre presentations. And I believe we have a proclamation that I am to sign regarding Fair Housing Month. Mr. Mayor, Madam City Clerk, is anybody here for the Fair Housing Month? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if you want to, Mr. Mayor, if you could go down with the proclamation yep. and read it. Absolutely. Her, that'd be great. Introduce yourself. 
So in honor of Fair Housing Month, I will sign the official proclamation, City of Moorhead State of Minnesota, which reads as follows. Whereas the City of Moorhead and its Human Rights Commission are committed to preventing housing discrimination while promoting equal opportunity in Moorhead, and we recognize the importance of increasing community awareness regarding fair housing. <clears throat> and whereas each April, the entire nation comes together to celebrate fair housing, and 2019 commemorates the 51st anniversary of Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, commonly known as the Federal Fair Housing Act. And whereas everyone has a right to safe, decent, and welcoming housing, regardless of race, color, creed, religion, national origin, sex, disability, sexual orientation, public assistance status, and marital or familial status, and whereas everyone has a right to live in neighborhoods of opportunity and choice where people can thrive and be healthy as a result of quality education, a clean and safe environment, and economic and social opportunities. <clears throat> Now, therefore, I, Jonathan Judd, Mayor of the City of Moorhead, do hereby pro proclaim April as Fair Housing Month in Moorhead and encourage lenders, real estate agents, landlords, business owners, and other residents alike to take this opportunity to recommit to preventing unlawful housing discrimination while promoting equal opportunity. Thank Mr. You. Mayor, ma'am, could you identify yourself sure, for the thanks. record? My name is Mikkel Pauling Norman, and I'm the chair of the Moorhead Human Rights Commission. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, Mayor. Thank you. And a big uh, sincere gratitude and thanks for the, uh, to the Moorhead hum Human Rights uh, Board and Commission for their work in our community. Uh, moving on to 5B, Commercial No Sort Recycling Pilot Program Update. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, even though my Spartans are not in the game tonight, I will keep this uh, summary short and succinct for anyone else interested in the, the game later. So thanks for the time tonight. I wanted to give you a quick update on our commercial no sort program. It was initiated prior to some of the council members uh, who are sitting here today. Are, um, so I'll get you up to speed on that. Um, kind of the details of the program, a little budget review talk about evaluation and reporting, that's a requirement for the uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, talk about some of the results and our next steps. So the pilot program came about by, we were approached by the FM Chamber back in the spring of 2018 to see if we were interested <coughs> in doing a pilot program for commercial no sort recycling. And although we have 610 businesses that we provide garbage service, there is no there is not no sort recycling, it's double negative, uh, I guess, is not available. But other commercial recycling is available through Minn Kota and, some, and um, Ken Sanitations for paper and cardboard, but there is nothing available for no sort. So we thought we'd take this on here in Moorhead as uh, the only city in the Fargo-Moorhead area to do this program. And the objective is to, was to test the feasibility operationally, logistically, and economically of expanding our no sort recycling program to the commercial sector in Moorhead. Program length is from October 2018 to May 2019. We actually implemented this on July 1st because we made all the preparations, all the announcements, all the, and had all the businesses sign up, yet we were not through the grant approval process yet with the PCA, so we couldn't execute we couldn't count that towards our six month program. It was originally gonna be six months and now it turned out to be probably about 10 months, but that's okay uh, because we got a little more data to work with. 
the budget. 75% of those costs were covered by the, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency assistance, environmental assistance grant. And we, had 40, we have 47 local businesses participating. Our original pilot program scope was going to be 35 businesses, but due to popular demand, we ended up expanding it to 47 businesses. Total costs, about $42,000. Grant funding we received was around $32,000. And our matching funds were used out of our recycling budget. So one of the requirements of the PCA grant is to track data. So we put RFID tags on all of our dumpsters and reader on our truck. So, and there's a console in the truck and the drivers actually get to push a button that says, if it's good, if it's good, they don't push anything. If it's empty, they push a button and it flags it, contaminated flags it or blocked and it's flagged. So we have that data and this is our current data breakout. So the good thing is that purple area is good results. And so I'll talk a little bit more about these in, in more detail. What we do have real quickly is we actually have a dashboard set up GIS. This is too cumbersome. I'm just going to, yeah, if you want to flip over to that real quick. If not, we can just go on. That, that's okay. Um, the dashboard actually, I can go on a map, click on a button <clears throat> to all my participating businesses, and there's a status board there that says 80% participation, quality is good. So we have that level of detail. Um, yep, there's a, a quick highlight there. And if you want to, yeah, if you, and, you, and I can click on any of those buttons and, and it gives me the details of where we're at with where they're at in participation. So we have that level of detail. So we're going to use some of that data and then our air track data. You can switch back for me. Thanks, Chris, to report to the PCA. So I'll go into further detail on some of the what we found so far in the program. So 11% of, of all of our tips are blocked. Well, it's no surprise that through the, the winter months, we had a lot of snow blockage. Uh, so we were unable to get to some of those places. Um, probably not so bad given the, given the circumstances. And the great news is that when we move on to contamination, uh, we only got about 1% contamination. And that's 1% of the total tips of those serviced receptacles. Um, and of those, 95% was less than 10% contaminated. So you can see all that to the left of the graph is 0 to 10% contamination, and then the rest were very were high level of contamination, but the dump, number of dumps were very low. And 73% had zero contamination, which is pretty phenomenal for a, a recycling program. And so this is the empty but not dumped. Basically, it just kind of demonstrates that there's some businesses that are not participating. And of those, uh, about 63%, this is actually percent of the recycling bin full. So that could be a reflection of two things, either not participating or the bin is too big for their requirement. So we haven't broke that down into further detail. I'm, I'm sure that the bulk of those is because we just need to provide a smaller <coughs> container for them. This is a re so this is kind of a recap of 2018. That blue bar is, is our residential program, homes and apartments. Drop sites are in red. And then I just, for, for just comparison, what our pilot program has added with those 47 businesses, we're collecting about 9.8 tons per month from 47 businesses. So there is some target of opportunity there based on this pilot program. So if you put, this, this graph is our current total recycling, and that green line is the current commercial program. So we are collecting, uh, on the average of 45 tons per month, commercial recycling that is not no sort. It's under, it's either cardboard or paper. It doesn't include all of the recyclable materials. And then this next, so total, when we talk about commercial, residential, drop sites, we collect about 280 tons per month of recyclables, traditional recyclables in the city of Moorhead, which is a significant number. So the way I wanted to look at this, so we have 47 businesses participating in a pilot program out of 610 businesses. How do you extrapolate that data? Well, you make a whole bunch of assumptions. So this would be if I assumed that half of the businesses 
participated if we implemented this program. So 305 businesses, and they are on the average the same size as the 47 in the pilot program. So you can see kind of how loose the assumptions are, right? But um, so if you do all that, then we're looking at a potential, if we have 50% participation based on the pilot program, of collecting an additional 64 tons per month for our program. However, that, doesn't also, that does not say whether that would include the current 45, 45 tons per month that we're collecting currently under the current commercial program. So there's a lot of variables there. So if you make an assumption that what we collect now commercially will continue and we have an additional 64 tons per month, that would lead to a 22% increase in traditional recycling, about 800 tons a year which is a 2.2% increase in the diversion rate out of the landfill. So there's some supporting slides in your packet that shows the overall diversion rate and how many uh, tons of municipal solid waste we deal with annually. But if we assume the 45 tons per month of our existing commercial program rolls into that 65 tons or 64 tons a month, that means we would only gain 19 tons a month which would be a 7% increase in traditional recycling versus the 22% and a 0.56% increase in the diversion rate. So there's a lot of numbers there, a lot of assumptions. Is this really, is there any basis for this? No, it's the best way to extrapolate and put a fair guess on how this program would, would, would be or would be effect, how effective it would be. So that's a lot of data. Bottom line is I think it's worthwhile to continue and come back next month with a recommendation on whether we should implement a full-scale commercial no sort program. The big piece that's missing is that I need to finalize a fee structure. So I got to take a look at some current commercial garbage rates, look at what Clay County is going to do with their tipping fees, make some adjustments there, then I have to make some adjustments and calculations on what I would propose as a commercial fee and how that compares to garbage rates. It will be higher. We know that for sure, but I don't know how much higher that will be. Um, but there's a, we all, I'll present some case studies next briefing next month that show that there are potentials to save your gar some fees from garbage if you recycle commercially more. So with a, and then you also save on that, you don't pay 17% solid waste management tax to the state of Minnesota on recyclables that you do on garbage. So that's, that, help, that will help equalize the pricing structure. So I'll do that. Once we have a fee structure, we're going to conduct a survey to see if, what kind of take rate we'd get from local businesses if this is how much you were asked to pay for commercial no sort recycling. And then we'll make a final recommendation to you next month on whether we recommend implementing the program and what that fee will be charged or um, advertised for our customers. So really, that's get you up to speed on where we're at. We got another month or so of collection to go and a fee structure, and then we'll work some more data and come up with a concrete recommendation. So I can answer any questions at this time. Councilmember Gertz. Uh, so do you, do you use a different uh, truck other than the one that is for residential? For so empty? we're using our current commercial rear loader that I purchased for the apartment recycling. Okay. So we collect apartments on, on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then we're doing commercial on the pilot program on Wednesday. So we would have Monday, Wednesday, Friday available to expand uh, the commercial no sort market. So you actually have sanitation workers that are dumping, or because you know, my question is, how do you determine if it's contaminated? But oh. I was thinking you would just use the same residential one without having visual uh, inspection of. Yeah, the it is a dumpster. rear loader, so they're looking into the dumpsters, and even yeah. the 96 gallons. There's a tote tipper on the rear loader, so there is contact, and they look in there. And plus, we do a monthly. Uh, reviews with our sustainability manager Haley went out and conducted some some quality control evaluations okay yeah and that answer my other question is how do you tell if it's empty if the truck is dumping it but um, obviously if they're looking at it they should be able to determine if it's empty yes exactly <laughs> yep they'll go and look at it and then they'll hit the button and say it's empty yep. and uh, but Wayne is my primary driver on this route and he 
he is a big fan of this program. And so for a driver to say that he's a big fan of the program means that it's operate, you know, there's very low contamination, there's high participation, it's very satisfying for that route as compared with the apartments that continue okay. to be challenging. Thank you. I think it's a great um, opportunity to do this test program. I think that uh, there's probably a lot of businesses that want to participate and um, just because it's uh, the right thing to do for our environment. So thank you. Council Member Watson Curry. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Mayor. Thanks, Steve, for the update. Um, I am pleasantly surprised with the contamination rate, the less than the 1% of the total tips. I think that's really excellent. I did have one clarifying question and then another comment. Um, so looking at the dumpsters, it's I'm guessing for most of these businesses, it's staff that's bringing out an inside container and dumping into the dumpster, or is there an interface where it's directly just the consumer or no, customer it's, of that it's the it's the uh, <clears throat> the workers, the employees, okay. and they have some collection system internal inside the facility. So my question there was, do you know if they're, I know you're doing so many questionnaires and getting a lot of information with them, are they doing any sort of perusing of it to help reduce some of that contamination, or are people getting more accustomed to, I mean, that's speculation too, I, I guess. I but. think it, it's a direct reflection of the business management interest in the program. Mm -hmm. And so they usually take the time to train their employees. Um, you know, I'll use Rob's, the, more, the Cullen Hockey Center is in the green. They're one of our mm -hmm. good customers participating mm -hmm. in the program, and that's because they've taken act, they're, they're working inside to make it available. They're educating the, you know, the, the people who volunteer and help out mm -hmm. in that organization. So it is a direct reflection of management. Same with the apartments. Where we find success is where they have an engaged, proactive management. And then just my comment, I, I also think it's a great program, and um, I think it provides a, a level of consistency across our community, too, if people know, as the rules vary from municip various municipalities mm -hmm. and cities, I think it's nice that you know if you're at the library or the hockey rink or uh, any of our parks buildings or you know whoever is opted in that it's the same rules apply. So I, I do think that that's kind of a great education opportunity for our community at large, so I, I really appreciate that effort. So. Okay. Thanks. Council Member Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Steve, uh, these are very encouraging results, and, and um, I you know, was an advocate of uh, having you take a look at this um, um, back when we, we initially discussed it. Um, a couple questions come up, and I know you probably haven't gotten this in depth yet, but um, I, I believe a lot of the businesses that um, recycle probably are recycling paper. And there are companies in the Fargo-Moorhead area that already do pick up um, on a fee basis. Um, have you heard anything from any of the um, for-profit companies that they might uh, might be affected by us implementing commercial non-sort? Yes, uh, probably the largest would be Minn Kota. And they have, since the inception of this pilot program, they now offer commercial no-sort services okay i don't know what the pricing structure is but we've talked with mary at Minn Kota, and so it will impact uh if we implement this and particularly in occ the cardboard uh, because a lot of uh the businesses who currently recycle is occ and it's very heavy so that tonnage uh, is primarily from cardboard sure that, that makes a lot of sense and i know we're just in the beginning stages of this but um, it, as far as a pricing structure for the commercial enterprises that we service, are we going to be charging them more on their bills, or is this going to be something that's included in our recycling program? Um, and I know you mentioned the MPCA grants mm -hmm. as well. How does that play into all this? Yeah, the grant was just specifically for the pilot program. So if we did implement this uh, citywide, there would be we would be charging that for that service. Uh, to the businesses, so just like we bill them com for commercial garbage, they would uh, they would receive a bill for recycling services as well. So that's where it'll take, you know, come into play. Where if they have a six cubic yard garbage container and they want to pay for recycling, um, maybe they can go to uh, half of that to a two cubic yard, or if they're serviced five times a week, maybe they can go down to three if they're recycling. The one incentive is we won't charge a container rental for the recycling container as we do for garbage. So that's another way that I'm trying to bring this price closer 
is that solid waste management tax or the lack of for recycling, and then we won't charge a monthly rental fee for containers for recycling. Excellent. That sounds great. It makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. And then, and we will we will kind of work with Minn Kota because of our pricing structure compared with theirs. Maybe we decide to have we you know because we we have sole garbage service in the city. Um, we don't really have that for recycling, so we would have to kind of look at that too. Maybe the best thing would be to to have a competitive market for recycling, whereas uh, Minn Kota can offer services in the city of Moorhead. That would take further discussion, but there's some options that we could consider to make it best for, I mean, the focus is to increase our diversion rate and make it affordable and accessible for our businesses. So yeah. how do we achieve that might be a hybrid, so. Yep, no, that makes a lot of sense. And, and um, if we're competitive with the private market, then we're just giving business owners an opportunity to have additional choices as well. Yes. So thank you. Council Member White. I had uh, two things. One is just to say I, I, I also agree. I think this is great, and, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing the next set of data that you have. And in particular, having you know being employed at one of the large institutions in our community and seeing even when there's a strong will to improve our recycling, there's real challenges at some of those larger organizations. And I think anything that we can do to make it easier for them so that they can more effectively recycle and that we can reduce the things going into our landfill is a good thing. And then the second thing I actually wanted to, I hope uh, with everyone's, um, uh, uh, you know, if they're okay with this, I wanted to diverge for just a second because this is the first time you've been in front of us since the flood fight started. And I just wanted to um, take a minute to, to thank you and your crew for all of the tremendous work that they've been doing because as we all know, um, we rolled in from a very difficult winter right into flood fight. And I have to say, for those of us who spent time down at the SOC, watching not just the, the friendliness, but the level of professionalism when all of your, um, all of the folks were working long hours and um, very difficult physical labor. And we as a city owe you a debt of gratitude, all of you, so thank you. Well, thank you, and I just mm -hmm. would like to thank my folks in Public Works and the rest of the city staff who helped with the SOC. I saw leadership from all levels, uh, attitude, great attitudes from all levels, and we made a lot of changes on the fly that came from uh, all different levels of management in my organization because of observations and efficiencies that they observed in their past experiences. So it was a very uh, good, good process, and I would like to publicly thank uh, Brandon Lunick and the, the school district for uh, allowing us to use their facility. They were super hosts, uh, great team effort, and, uh, and all the students they supplied as well. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. And uh, seeing uh, <clears throat> no further questions or discussions, we'll move to uh, agenda item number six, the approval of the minutes from the March 22nd, 2019 City Council meeting and a March 25th, 2019 City Council meeting. Thanks, I move to approve with one amendment. I move to approve the March 22nd with the amendment that I, I would actually like myself to be listed as present. Um, I walked in and it, just as we were taking roll call. Yeah, huh? It says I was absent. But it does say that I came in later, but I actually walked in and I did say I was present, so. But I was, I think, about there, so. Just wanted it to be corrected. So you're making the motion to uh, approve with that? With that amendment. With that amendment. So that's been made by Council Member White. Is there a second? Second by Council Member Watson Curry. All in favor of said motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I should probably clarify, uh, do I need, I can make one motion for A and B, correct? Or should I have separated them? Is that fine? Okay. Don't want to mess anything up for the record. Especially in my line of work, you cannot do that. So, uh, <laughs> item number seven, uh, are there any citizens that want or wish to address the council this evening? Are there any citizens that would like to address the council this evening? Uh, seeing none, we will move to agenda item number nine, economic development report. 
Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I think that was added to the consent at the last minute, so it's, it was approved, right, Dan, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. That was I didn't added. see an asterisk. It so. was over the weekend, so the updated online is correct. Okay. What you had was wrong, so sorry about that. No worries at all. And then we will move to, I believe, number 17. Nope, number 18. 18, yes. Cooperative City Prosecution Services Agreement. My apologies. Mr. Mayor, City Council, this agreement attached is um, a com compilation of all the discussion we've had to date. We have the cities of Dilworth, um, Glendon, and Barnesville signing on to the Prosecution Services Agreement. Our department is up and running, and it's going very, very well. Um, we decided to charge the cities a flat rate, very close to what they were being charged before. We figured that was the most fair, and um, it is. this agreement is going through the process at every city council meeting. So for example, it's, I think Dil or Barnesville's approving it tonight, Dilworth will approve it in a week or two, and then all everybody will have um, approved it. Um, they've all agreed to the term, so all we need you to do is to approve it as um, presented before you. And in summary, um, we've talked about the costs. We're working on some cost savings and some extra revenue options. Um, we do have one of the staff working part-time, and she's also, uh, and then another staff doing victim witness. So we've really maximized um, the staff that are down there. And as I said, everything's flowing really good. The court's been great. The county's been great. Everybody's been great. Everything's working great. <laughs> Sorry, I said that too many times. <laughs> anyway, so are there any questions? Council Member Gertz. Well, I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I would move approval. I'll second it. <laughs> motion, motion made to approve by Council Member Gertz. Seconded by, I believe, Councilmember Hendrickson. I'm under the weather, so I apologize. Um, all in favor of said motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank and I also you. want to give a shout out to uh, City Manager Volkers um, and uh, Mr. Molly uh, for your work on that. Uh, that's really good work. Uh, thank you for all your efforts. I know it took some time, but really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, moving on to, I believe, number 22, Mayor and Council reports. Any reports? Are they good to order? Okay. Seeing none, uh, Madam City Manager, do you have a report? Real quick, I just wanted to give you an update um, on the flood. It did crest today. I think it crested at 35.0 one or two so it was a major flood in the top 10 for moorhead so it did um our city engineer and others were hoping it would get beyond if we're going to have the flood that level beyond the 34.93 which was a top 10 flood mm -hmm. previously and now this one jumped that so now this flood is now bumped up to the top 10 so and everything's been very smooth knock on wood and it crested the water will stay at this level for a couple days and then slowly go down we are starting tomorrow to reverse the gates reverse the levees reverse everything we've done and one by one by one we've got to about 100 125 on our sheet of 290 tasks talked about every single one and flood briefing every single morning and now we're reversing and undoing everything there will be an awful lot of cleanup so thank you Councilmember White for acknowledging the Public Works um, Office. The cleanup is going to be tough the next few weeks. I think the citizens realize that things are not going to be as clean as they were before, and it will take some effort, but we're going to try hard. So, are there any questions? And thank you, Council, for your support. The staff really felt the support that you let us do our jobs, and you were very supportive in the community, and you believed in what we did. So, thank you. Any uh, comments or questions for Madam City Manager? <laughs> well, uh, no executive session. Any new business for the good of the order? Well, okay. Uh, I guess, Adam number 26, are there any 
citizens that want to address the council now since we're almost done. All right, uh, I guess seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? This is really unusual. We're adjourned. Good job, Mayor.